Is there really a heaven? Well, join me in today's chapter and verse, and let's discuss the matter. Should Christians celebrate the Sabbath? What are the feasts of the Lord? What is Torah? And does it apply to Gentiles as it applies to Jews? If you are looking for answers to these questions, you are in the right place. Welcome to Three Trees Fellowship, a ministry of the Gospel of Yeshua, placing the truth of the Word of God above the traditions of men. Here is Mike Sutcliffe. We will not bow down to the gods of men. Hey everyone, this is Mike Sutcliffe from Three Trees Ministry in Dixon, Illinois, and the online ministries pastor for Corner Fringe Ministries in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. Thank you for joining me again today as we continue our study of uh, Genesis. We're going through chapter and verse, and today we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 8. Now, before we get into the passage, let me ask you, have you ever read a part of scripture, any part? Uh, maybe it's the uh, when you get to the genealogy and you tend to skip over the names because you're like, oh, this is so long, so tedious. Sometimes you might even think it's boring, right? Or have you ever wondered, why, why do I need to read this? It seems so basic. Well, when you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 8, you might be tempted to think just that. But I want to caution you to not make that mistake. You know, remember, the purpose of reading these scriptures is not always to uh, just get the scientific background or the historical aspect. The purpose of reading scripture is to know God. And that's why we do this the way we do it. In fact, um, it's more important. I think this has been for me personally, as we go through this, it has been better for me as I go word by word through each particular text that we've gone through studying it, because it allows the, the words to kind of percolate in my mind and heart. And I think about them over and over again. And I'm just kind of like, almost like a Rubik's cube, right? You got this, this puzzle in front of you and you're trying to make it all fit and work together. Well, it's a good time for me to remind you that you should take out your pen and paper and write down today's verse. So let's read uh, Genesis chapter one, verse eight. And you're probably very familiar with it. It's a short verse. It says, God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening and there was morning a second day. Let me read that again. It's short enough. We can do it a couple of times, right? God called the expanse heaven and there was evening and there was morning a second day. You know, another good, uh, good things about doing for me, at least as I'm making these messages, the good thing that we're doing it this way is that uh, it tends not to uh, cause redundancy. So I'm going to say some things in each video that you, if you listen to them all back to back to back, you might hear the same thing over and, and you might lose interest. But if you're only listening to one a day, it, it gives you time for you to just digest it, right? So let's take a look at this word Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew word for heaven. You know, this is a growing question for Christians today. Is heaven real? So let's see if we can figure out what, what it is that the Bible tells us about heaven. So the Hebrew word is shamayim, and it falls into two pretty broad categories or areas of usage in the scripture. The first is the heavens is the place where our father lives, right? When, when you think about heaven, you think this is where the father is. And right now his son Yeshua is at his right hand. This is what we picture in our mind. The second is the physical heavens that we look upon daily. I absolutely love watching the sunrise and the sunsets. I, I get blown away. And sometimes uh, my breath gets taken away when I see these beautiful white towering clouds that just seem to go on without end when I look up into uh, the to the skies above me, right? So when you write this particular passage out, when you're doing your word study here, what are some questions that come to your mind? What questions do you think about as you write them out? So like for me, the question that came up for me personally was, is heaven real? Where is it? I mean, if there is a heaven, where is it? I couldn't help but think about when I grew up in the 1970s and my dad was a big Star Trek fan. And uh, there was one episode where uh, they had gone far, far into the into the outer reaches of space to find this giant light that was like an orb that was kind of pulsing. And, and that was supposed to be God. And so uh, it turned out it wasn't. Obviously, it's science fiction. But the, the, the it remains the fact that it made me think about where is heaven? We've had... Um, We've got satellites in space. We've had shuttles in space. We've got orbits. We got we got something on Mars. We still have yet to find where this heavenly realm is. 
One, uh, then and another question that comes to mind is, uh, does God really live in heaven? That, that's for me, it's fascinating because God is everywhere. And I start to think about like, where is he and does he really live there? And what does it, what does that look like? I think of uh, Isaiah's vision when he's in the throne room of heaven and uh, God's, God's uh, cape is, it just fills up the entire heavenly space. And I just, I, and it causes Isaiah to fall on his face, right? That's, that's what I think about when I think about that. And then what does it look like? Now, these are pictures. You may have some other questions. I'd love to hear your thoughts too. But what what is what comes to your mind when you're thinking about heaven? Now, I I for one, I believe in a literal heaven and a literal hell. Uh, despite the growing number of doubters in our faith today, and even in the world, right? Many people are denying it. I have landed on the authority of Scripture a very very long time ago. In fact, that's one of those things that I had to resolve early on in my faith in order to move forward. It was a stumbling block for me as a child, and I refused to allow it to be a stumbling block as an adult. Now, that doesn't mean I'm I'm naive or ignorant or uh, any of those other derogatory terms that you, someone might say as uh, about me as a believer. I just have decided that I can trust the Word of God, and that means for me that when I read it, every word of it is inspired by God and is perfect. I don't need to, I don't need to change it in any way. So what do we know about the heavens? Well, Psalm 19 tells us that um, they tell the glory of God. Think about that. The, the word, of the, this whole idea of glory of God, think about awe. It should be awe inspiring. You know, the first time you're up in a plane and you fly up into the clouds and you break that barrier between the just the sky and then that that plateau, that marker where you're in the clouds and then you're above the clouds. It is just breathtaking. Uh, Psalm 50 verse six says they declare his righteousness, right? Life comes from the, from the heavens, right? We, we, uh, we, in, in the book of Exodus, we have the story of manna coming down from heaven. We know that, uh, we, even in our current culture, we pray for the rains, right? We ask the Lord to make the heavens shower us with living water so that we can, we can water our crops and things like that, right? This is, this is what is meant when it says uh, in Psalm 50 verse six, that they declare his righteousness. How about Psalm 69, verse 34, that says, they praise him, right? This word of praise is about worship. It's about declaring everything about God that is perfect and beautiful. And that's what this is all about. I love, I, I, I'm one of those people that I, rarely do I, do I have it a day when I see those beautiful clouds with, you ever see them, the big white puffy ones that look like a big old cotton ball. And then you see like almost like a little hole in it, like a doorway, and I, my heart just quickens. And I think about the return of my Savior could be coming through one of those clouds. All of these cause me to praise God. You know, there's also the, the passages in Exodus 20, verse 4, and Jeremiah 44, verses 17 through 25, that warn us that these created things, this heaven is not to be worshipped. Rather, they are to, intended to point us to the Creator. So when we read this particular passage and we start to think about all the things that God is doing here, we can't even take a second to be bored with God's Scripture because when we start to understand that when God called the expanse heaven and there was evening and there was morning a second day, He was literally setting up praise worship, and glory for himself by creating such a beautiful thing for us to behold. You know, this is the exciting part of going through scripture chapter and verse, and I hope it's been a blessing to you today. You know, before I go, I'd like to ask you to join us uh, for worship sometime. Now, not necessarily if you live in the Dixon area, we'll talk about that, but if you're uh, anywhere in the world and you happen to catch this, I would invite you to join us for Shabbat worship on the Corner Fringe Ministries YouTube channel. Usually da Pastor Daniel Joseph is up there teaching, and I promise you that there will rarely be an occasion where he doesn't bring the word of the Lord, that it does not bring conviction and encouragement, causing hope and bringing clarity. And I think it's a beautiful opportunity for you to grow in your relationship. We have this beautiful online community we call the Online Fellow Fringers on our Facebook group. And there it's about a little over 700 people today that are encouraging each other in prayer and Bible studies and just sharing what God is saying and doing in their lives.
you know, if you are in the Dixon, Illinois, Sauk Valley area, we are, we're surrounded by places like Sterling and Oregon and all these different little communities that are really wonderful. And you are looking for a messianic house church. Well, then please feel free to reach out to me. We'd love to worship with you. The Corner Fringe Ministries worship takes place at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time uh, every Shabbat. And here at Three Trees, we do ours at 4 p.m. in the afternoon on Shabbat. And we'd love to talk to you about that further. Well, that's all the time I have for today. And until next time, Shalom. Thank you for joining us today. And if today's episode was a blessing to you, please share it with your friends on social media. Please follow us on Facebook at Three Trees Ministry. If you live in or near the Sauk Valley area in Illinois and would like to join us for worship, please contact Mike at threetreesministry.com. Do you have questions about the Bible and Yeshua that you aren't comfortable asking your pastor? Mike would be happy to help. Just email him. That address again is mike at threetreesministry.com. Tune in to the next episode for more from Three Trees Ministry, speaking truth in love to equip the saints for their works of ministry. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. As for me and my house,